All right, recording is rolling. It is Thursday, January 25th. Uh, got activity for you guys today. Uh, yeah, so last few days we've been doing, see, we did reflection a couple days ago, then we did refraction. It's going to do refraction. Uh, Ray Diagers with you guys soon, but uh, feels like uh, we need activity day. So today's uh, this day. Um, right, you guys uh, have one of these cards on your desk, so I'm going to cut this out, help you guys put this together. Uh, reminder, tomorrow is club photo day and senior panoramic photo in the morning. Uh, here's the uh, schedule for that. So senior panoramic and first period and then a bunch of clubs after uh, all throughout the day. This is posted to Google Classroom. So check that out and see where you're supposed to be when. Okay. And uh, probably about 15 minutes at the end of class today, uh, we'll look at a TED Talk on Bolato Illusion. Okay. Now, what is Newton's wheel and Benham's wheel? Oh. I think I showed you guys this the other day, but just a reminder, I got a Newton's wheel right here. Okay? So if we give this a spin, oh, it, uh, Newton said if you put all the colors together, you get what color? White, white light. Yeah, white light is composed of all the colors, right? Now this is one that works really well in class. That looks pretty white to me. Um, but if you're watching this on the video at home, there's a certain frame rate with the videos. So this doesn't work so well on, on video, but yeah, right. So, but, but in person, that works real good. Okay, so we're gonna make one of those. Uh, and the other thing we're putting together alongside that is Benham's wheel. So let me switch my screen over and show you guys an example of this. All right, Benham's wheel. Right. Hey, look, that looks like the template that you guys have. Right. Now, clearly, that's just black and white. Right. But if you give this thing a spin, now this, some people can see, um, some people can't. Uh, it looks like it's going to create the illusion of color. So I'm curious to see if you guys see it. Uh, raise your hands if you do. Uh, I skipped a bunch of his explanation. What he's explaining is that this um, is uh, supposed to get the idea that color doesn't really exist in the world in the sense that like there's no like green electrons and red electrons. There's no such thing, right? There are electron configurations that can absorb and reflect certain wavelengths of light. And then your eye and your mind put that together and color is created in your mind, right? Is, is really what it is, right? So clearly that wheel is just black and white, but it gives it a spin and Right. Now, you may or may not see this, but I can tell you what I see. To me, it looks like the inside is like kind of a dark, uh, like purple blue color. This looks kind of reddish. This looks kind of goldish. This looks kind of greenish. Right. right. So uh, maybe you see that, or maybe not, or maybe you see slightly different colors than what, what I just said. Uh, here's to see. So uh, here, let me see show of hands for. Um, First of all, if you don't see the colors at all. Second, if you see pretty much what I said. And maybe third, if you see uh, colors, but maybe differently from what I said, right? How many of you don't see the colors at all? Who doesn't see them well, right? right. Who sees uh, pretty much what I said, like pretty much the same colors, right? And does anybody see colors, but maybe differently than what I said? All right, right. So, or, or maybe, uh, you know what? Maybe if you don't see them on the video, um, maybe you'll see it in person after we, cut this wheel out and put it together. You know, um, maybe it could be that type of thing where it works better in person on the video, possibly, All right? So let's switch back over here. Right. Uh, now, you, uh, you guys each individually have one of these cards, but this came from uh, the full printout looks like this, uh, right? Uh, which oh, has the model of what we're putting together, right? And last class, I put one of these together. It came out pretty good. So it's going to go like this, right? Ah, you guys see that. That, that that picture matches right. So yeah, Newton's wheel on one side, we got a Benham's wheel on the other side, right? And you can twirl this back and forth. Uh, works. I, I think it works pretty good for Benham's wheel, right? You might. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. Do, do you guys see colors there? Nice. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see some of you guys nodding. Do you guys see the colors? Even though maybe it didn't, you know, show up so well on the on the video, but you might see it here. Uh, if you're watching this video at home in the future, uh, you know, there's a certain framework rate, rate may, may not work you know, super well in the video, possibly. Right? Right. And then on the other side, we've got a um, Newton's wheel. Now, Newton's wheel works better, I think, the faster you spin it. Oh, actually, you know, it's working pretty good, though. Right. Uh, but sometimes a good way to spin it really fast is to like line it up like this right? and then just pull the string. Super. Right. I'll spin it real fast like that. Right. So, I'm looking for it. Okay, so see, this is pretty well balanced. Notice it's spinning about like this axis. It goes along this way, right? Uh, which is like, um, all right, so think about some engineering details here, right? right? Maybe that's the reason for like having these spacers here, right? But when I uh, first put it together something like this uh, about a year or two ago, I said, oh, what if you just like lose back to back, like, like that, right? But 
if you if you do this, right, the problem is that when you pull a string, okay, well, okay, it, it tends to want to like rotate like this, right? And then it wants to rotate about this axis, which which that's no good, right? That's like, yeah, that's, right? So all right, um, you know, just thinking ahead a few steps, you know, like big picture for this whole project. Maybe uh, maybe I want this spacing between these two, right? The spacing right here to be larger than the distance, like the diameter distance between these strings, right? Right. Maybe that'll get it to spin about the correct axis, right? So that you can see this, see this at all, right? Just take it ahead a little bit, right? Right. So there you go. There's the full project. Right. right. So I'm going to take one of these cards and uh, cut out these two circles. Right? Uh, later on, we'll cut out some or use the scrap paper to cut out some rectangles. Really used to glue this all together. Right, so I'm cutting this out as you guys are cutting this out. Right, I cut out a Newton's wheel and a Benham's wheel. of a double wheel going on. Ooh, you guys love something really cool to show your friends and family later. Uh, I guess uh, parents or little brothers and sisters say, what, What'd you do at school today? I say, I made this. Like, Whoa. You have the best physics class. That's right. All right, got my two discs. So you guys, okay, yeah. Some of you guys got the two discs also. Uh, some of you guys are still together. there. Now everybody's working a little bit different pace. It's all right. Okay. Uh, well, I got my scissors out. Maybe I'll go ahead and cut those strips, those rectangle strips too. Right. Then I'm eventually going to uh, scrunch back and forth to make these spacers. Right. Right. So ooh, maybe we want four of those. Right. I think four is a good good way to balance it. Right. Keep it symmetrical pretty easily. Right. So get four rectangle strips. Maybe maybe what I'll do is I'll cut two long rectangle strips and I'll cut each of those in half. That's uh, what I did last class, worked out pretty good. Right? And uh, you might want to think too, you know, just think all, all these little tiny considerations that might help. Right? If you want this to like spin well, uh, do you guys think uh, it would be nice to have the center of mass of this whole object like right at the geometric center, right along the axis it's supposed to spin about? Right? And for that to happen, maybe each of these spacers has to be like equally spaced symmetrically, but also equal mass. Right, so you want like an equal amount of this cardstock, right? Like if it's weighted to one side, it's going to be all lopsided and maybe not work stuff, well, right? So, uh, so I'm going to measure. See, I'll measure out uh, about one centimeter wide, and then I'll, I'll get two long rectangles side by side. Okay. So you only each one centimeter wide right here. Okay, one centimeter, one centimeter. So that these are the same width, therefore the same amount of material, therefore the same mass. And then this thing is going to be balanced. And the center mass of this whole project is going to be right along the axis it's supposed to be spin about in the first place. There you go.
There's two long rectangles. So if I pull each one of these on a half, then you get a good cutting marker. Yes. Four small rectangles. And you must spacers right there. And spacers. I got a full is back forth, back forth, back forth. I just kind of winged it last class and uh, got like an odd number of these panels, which was good how they eventually glued. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess you could measure this or do some technique where you go like half and half and half or something. I'm going to do this where I just kind of pulled back and forth. And that worked out pretty good last class. So I'll try that again. Uh, yeah, All right, it's going to work out pretty good. Right, right there. So I got, got my spacers. Right. So give you guys a minute question there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you guys are catching up. I might actually go back and refold these a little bit. Get, uh, and get them a bit like those other two. Yeah. All right, looks like you guys are pretty well caught up there. All right. All right. So if I go back to think of this model, um, thinking right, I need to glue these to those. I also at some point need to punch holes, right? And I want to make sure the holes are aligned. I want to make sure everything's symmetrical. So if, like when the string goes through, right? So all these details that have to come together. Right? When I'm going to do this, uh, I'll try something a little different from last class. Experiment, try a little different things, right? Take this Newton's wheel and mark the locations of where I want to punch the holes. Okay. So here's like the very center. Okay. Um, I remember too, if I want this to spin along the correct axis, I want the spacing between these two discs. Right. So this distance here to be larger than the distance uh, between the strings. Right. That'll get it to rotate along the correct axis. Okay. So uh, um, what I found worked for that model. Oh, just the same way, right? As I'm going to measure one centimeter 
distance away from the central uh, point, right? So let's say between the green and the yellow wedges about that, right? One centimeter one way, point. One centimeter the other way, point, right? So there's where two of the holes are going, right? And then 90 degrees to that, right? Now there are uh, like 14 wedges of econom, right? Which means that if you go 90 degrees, then it's going to land like right in the middle of a wedge. Like in my case, uh, right in the middle of this kind of pink looking wedge. Right. Bam, bam. Right. Now, uh, since, since they're pretty close together, I didn't use the protractor, but um, if they were like further apart or if I had to get really precision uh, measurements, right, I'd probably use this protractor and measure out 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, like yes, yesterday, when we were doing Snell's law lab activity, um, one of the steps was I had to draw a normal line. And I did break out the protractor and get exactly 90 degrees to get a normal line. Let's do that. Okay. So, let's see, go ahead and punch holes exactly where I marked those. Okay. Got one centimeter from the center each. Now, I could do the same thing to the film stuff, uh, but what I'm going to do instead is actually glue this together first and then punch the holes in film stuff after the fact. Right? The advantage of doing that is that the holes will like, for sure be aligned. Right? Like if I punch the holes first, then that's an extra tricky step of I, I got to figure out like as I'm gluing, are the holes aligned? Like, uh, right? But I'll, I'll just uh, say that for later. Right, so let me uh, glue these uh, these spacers on. I'm just gonna flip over the student's wheel. Right. Now, do you need? Uh, I should probably mark locations of where I want to glue these right, to keep it balanced, right? Because I want these to be equally spaced. Again, so the center of mass of this whole object is right at the geometric center, so that it won't be lopsided. Right. Okay. And uh, the advantage of using uh, Newton's wheel is that well, you can kind of see through it, right? It's got a little bit of transparency and you can kind of play off the wedges. So see, I want one, uh, I'm gonna glue one right there. I'm gonna glue one on the opposite side. So I'm kind of looking through the paper. I can see that would be the exact opposite side, right? It's like if I hold my ruler across the, yeah, so it goes like right across the center right there, boom. It's all lined up. Right. Now the other ones, uh, I can use the same technique. Actually, I will go ahead and break out the protractor for this. I show you guys the technique I'm talking about to get exactly perpendicular. So put the node of the protractor right at the center, zero out everything I just did so far. And then 90 degrees, that's like up here on the disc. That's like, bam, right there. Okay. Turn this around, we get another 90 degree more. So zero out everything right there. Okay, 90 degrees, it's right here. Bam. Okay. Right. Let's make sure that all that lined up. Should. Yep. Sure does. All lines up. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Right. So it's exactly where I'm going to glue down these spacers. And so optimal amount of glue. Uh, shouldn't need crazy too much glue. If you, put, if you put too much, it takes too long to dry, right? Okay. But optimal amount, right? you guys have used glue plenty of times in this class. Okay. But an optimal amount of glue that will uh, keep pressing hold, it should dry in about 20 seconds. So, tag on these spacers right here. It's like pretty well evenly spaced. Uh, here's where I'm going to take Ben's wheel and press it up. Well, you know, never mind. Maybe, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll just hold it down like this. Okay. So I'm just pressing and holding right here. Just press and hold right, while that glue's drying. It's right across from each other. All good. Okay. Try these other two. Right. Press and hold these exactly where they should be. This whole thing is be symmetrical, exactly in place. Okay. 
I got those spacers in place. All right. All right now, here's where I'm gonna put some glue right on top of these spacers. See, like, if I put the glue on the disc, then I gotta try to like align the glue. All right. But if I put the glue right on top of these spacers, right on these spacer feet, then they'll naturally just stick to that opposite side of the venom's disc. That's good. Another glue right there. Okay. So, but I'm still saying, I punch the holes in yet. That's okay. I'm gonna write it this way as class. I just stick this on. Where? All right. That looks okay. Make sure it's aligned with the Newton's just beneath it. Spacers, where they go. Things about good. Let's go around and press and hold. This is going to stick right in place right there. Press and hold all the way around. So I make this uh, like, like flat like a pancake, but that's all right, because after it dries, you just like, just pull it apart, right? The, these papers will spring apart. So it'll be all, all right. All right, that'd be pretty good right there. All right, so let's go back to these holes that I had punched in the Newton's wheel side. Okay. And now all I'm gonna do is just, Go back and repunch those so that it punches all the way through Benham's on the other side. So, the tools. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get taken there. Let me go to the other side and make sure these all. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right where they should be. All right, it's looking good so far. Yeah, this looks like it's pretty well dried. Yeah, you can kind of pull it apart if you like. like that. All right, now we just got to string this thing up. Okay. So I gave you guys the good string. I got this kind of thin yarn, but I've been making this work. So this worked for me. All right, so I need some length. Uh, if you want to measure a length, you can. I'm just going to use the width of this podium. Um, maybe that's like approximately the width of your desk, if you like that. You just stretch the width of your, take that string, stretch the width of your desk. Okay. And I need to cut four strings. Okay. So four strings. Okay. Uh, if they're not exactly the same length, that'd be all right. If there's a little bit of mismatch, take care of that here in a minute. Okay, well, let's see what's my podium. And four strings here. All right, we've got four strings. They're all pretty close the same length. Now, uh, feed each one of these uh, through these holes. Right? Just uh, take a pen, push it through, up through. It's right through. It's one string through. Two string through. Oh, whoops. Mm -hmm. um, Three so yeah. string through. 
and four string through four strings. Place together. Okay. Now, one side I'm going to match the ends, make sure the ends match. So I'll just pull these through. Okay. Now the strings can slip back and forth. That'd be all right. Okay. But one end, I get the, it's pretty aligned. Okay. There's four ends, they align right there. Okay. So I've got there's the four ends. Okay. I'm just going to tie all these together. Okay. So they'll make a knot. Sure. Yeah. All right, so there's my four strings tied together on one side. Okay. Now, pull this thing taut. Okay. I'll put this right to the center just to make sure it's, but before I tie the other ends, yeah, just make sure it's going to give me the outcome I'm looking for. All right. Yeah, it's going to be rotating about like that. Right. So, all good here. Okay. And take these other four ends. Ooh, wow. Okay, that's our like almost exactly the same thing. Um, well, that, that was lucky, I guess, right? But if there was like one that was like an extra centimeter or two, you know, you could you know, cut it off or, 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 or leave it up, right? But uh, yeah, these are all the same length. So there we go. Hold that. Zip, tied together, I cut. Okay. And there you go. Right. Let's try this thing out. We just made it, right? Uh, let's see, is that, is that balanced? Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's, it's, it's a little wobbly, but it's pretty well balanced. Okay. Let's see, if, do, does this work? So, Newt's wheel set. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been about the center. Ooh, yeah, Newt's wheel looks pretty. Oh, okay. All right, time out, time out. Time out here. Yeah. All right, record and resume. Back here. Uh, we got this whole thing put together. We're just uh, doing a final check here. Right. So remember, Newton's wheel, especially, it's like the faster you spin it, the better. And a good way to get it to spin real fast is to wind this up just by doing this. Okay, wind it up and pull it. Ooh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. All right. Yep. Yeah. Um, have to see this on video later, see how it works on video. But uh, like I say in class, it's definitely looking like a, like a white color. It goes to white. Right. And then now, Benham's wheel. Uh, yeah, Past experience, it seemed like here's like an optimal type speed. So you just kind of rotate like back and forth like this. Um, it's like an optimal speed to get back forward, right? And yeah, okay. Now this one, I know everybody sees something a little bit different because your mind puts together the colors. I've right? got all different individual minds in here. But I can tell you what I see is that these three central lines, or so, right? like the, the inside track looks kind of like a dark blue purple. Then the next set looks kind of like a gold. Then I'm seeing green, and the outside is like back to like a kind of a dark purple again. Right. Right. So I'm seeing for Venom's wheel. All right. So there you go. There's uh, Newton's wheel, Venom's wheel. Boom. Okay. Looks like you guys are doing pretty good. You're pretty good. All right. All right. So uh, we got. Got 15 minutes left, so let me show you guys Bolato Illusions. Bolato Illusions. We're gonna.